Look at more possibilities so that there is no doubt regarding this Poissoli flow and Coet flow and the combined Poissoli and Coet flow. The Poissoli flow has been called as a channel flow in geological literature, but once we look at the fluid mechanics text, we find that the terminology is non uniform. What is Coet flow in one book, in another book, another way has been used, or what is channel flow or what is Poissoli flow in one book, in another book, the different definition has been given. The word channel flow has been used to explain Poissoli flow and Coet flow happening simultaneously and you can find some other book where channel flow has been said where there is a purely Poissoli flow taking place. Okay. Now what if u1 is more than 0 and u2 is also more than 0 and u1 say more than u2 so which means u1 is not equal to u2 so what do i mean comparing to this diagram say this is plus u1 and this is plus u2 you can see this half arrow is bigger so that means a higher slip velocity of movement of this boundary and this is a lower velocity but both in the same direction so how the profile will look like if you work with the equation you can understand and let us say there is a net pressure gradient that drives the fluid from bottom towards top. In that case what I mean is that, that the del p del z is more than dg sin theta under so many assumptions. Under this and under that suppose this is a marker before deformation then this is going to be the profile because you see this boundary is moving so this point will come here that point will come there and also parabolic profile will be produced. So now you can work out what if u1 less than 0 u2 less than 0 and say del p del z is less than dg sin theta and how the velocity profile will look like. So for the beginner it may take some time but as you practice it becomes very easy very quickly you can comment what is going to happen. Now we are going to bring the concept of pivot or the neutral point pivot or neutral point this word indicates a point which does not move during deformation. When this flow is happening say we start with this line and this kind of flow is taking place. There is one point on the line AB which has not moved. What is that point? the point of intersection between this line and the parabolic profile which is here. So we can call this either as a neutral point or we can call it a pivot. I think calling neutral point will be better. What is the coordinate of this neutral point? How to find out? We can see that this neutral point basically lies on the y axis the equation of y axis is z equal to 0. So put uz equal to 0 in equation 1, this is equation 1 and then find out y value, say you find out y is equal to y3. So then what is the coordinate of this point? the coordinate of this point is given by 0 comma y3. This is the coordinate you can find out y3 what I said here you can do find an algebraic expression. So 0 comma y3 is a point which has not moved during deformation. That means at this point the velocity is 0. Let me explain what happens to the velocity above this point and below this point. At each of these points you can see material points have moved in this direction and below that point 
all the material points must have moved in opposite direction. Notice that we are talking in terms of very slow flow of the rocks in the ductile deformation regime. So, we are essentially talking about laminar flow and we are essentially not talking about the turbulent flow. In the regime of turbulent flow, there is also a concept of Poissoli flow, channel flow, etc. I am not talking about that. Channel flow concept can also be there when you are thinking in terms of uh, non-Newtonian fluid. For the time being, I am also not talking about that. I am talking about incompressible Newtonian viscous fluid passing through infinitely long parallel wall channel. These channels, walls can be called boundaries and this channel in geology can be a case of a ductile shear zone. Okay. So, the opposite movement directions have been shown. Which point has got highest velocity in this direction? We can see this vertex V and the coordinate indicates the highest velocity. So, what is the highest velocity? So, the uz this, this is the highest velocity, uz1 is the highest velocity. So, instead of y1, I can call it y1, uz1 and this is the uz1. So, that is the point of highest velocity. Now, we have to understand a little bit more about the ductile shear sense and the direction in which the movement of the walls are of the velocity profile is happening. We can understand if I draw a line here, out of this AB segment, this segment of line, how it has behaved? This segment of line has been turned like that. You can see this diagram, this segment of line has been turned like that. So, this is like a movement in this way, if I give half arrows. Yes, this point has moved there, but the line has tilted in this way. This line has moved in this way, but the tilting is in this way. So, that is the shear sense. And where does it prevail? It prevails here. So, within this zone of the ductile shear zone, there is a movement in this direction. And look at this yellow half arrows and the white half arrows, they are not matching with each other, they are opposite to each other. What is happening in this zone? Let us take another color chalk, so that it does not look clumsy. Within this zone, what is happening? This segment of the line has turned in that way. So, if I draw this segment of the line, note the color, same segment of the line and what is the curvature now? Like this. So, what has happened? This line as if has got tilted and also deformed. So, this is the half arrow. I can borrow these half arrows here and I can draw these half arrows now matching with the applied slip sense. So, what has happened? In this process of flow, opposite shear senses have developed within a single shear zone simultaneously. all subject to the assumption that the rock behaves in Newtonian viscous. With this information, it will be good if we start try for the strain analysis of the shear zone where there can be a component of Poissoli flow. There may not be a component of Poissoli flow. If there is no component of Poissoli flow, make this del p del z 0. I may be dealing with a horizontal shear zone put theta equal to 0. I may be dealing with a salt dome vertical stem. So, then take theta is equal to 90 degree. I may take an inclined channel theta neither 0 nor 90 that is the case of let us say subduction channels. So, everything can be explained and that is why we did this generalized starting. Okay. So, now I am going to talk about the strain analysis part. This was the background information and after that we are in the position to understand the strain analysis. 
So let me draw again and say this is the velocity profile. A fluid flow is happening from bottom towards top and then opposite shear senses are produced under a bulk shear sense like this. And now where is the vertex? The vertex is here given by that coordinate. What was the orientation of the line initially before deformation started like this? Now as I told it is a laminar flow so all the material points have moved parallelly there is no eddies no vortices created. So if I take this point where this point was before deformation I can backtrack basically I can draw a line parallel to the boundary that meets over here. This was that material point that has now become the vertex and where was this point? It was previously over here. Where was this point? This point was previously over here. Now at the vertex if I draw a tiny tangent and if I draw a tiny tangent lying on the line and on the previous initial position of the point these two tangents are mutually parallel to each other that means strain at that point shear strain rotational strain is zero no rotation has happened this line has remained as it is. So what we understand is that the vertex of a Poissouli flow or a mixed Poissouli coet flow has got zero rotational strain or shear strain. vertex of velocity profile of parabolic flow. What kind of flow? Newtonian viscous incompressible fluid through parallel boundaries and under so many assumptions parabolic flow has zero shear strain. I am not talking strain unit as elongation or extension, quadratic elongation, reciprocal quadratic elongation, no. The logarithmic strain, stretch, no. I am talking about the rotation issue that this tiny tangent has not rotated there. Now I can take another point, say randomly I take here, I can draw a tiny tangent over there. This white point lying on the red curve where it was before deformation, from this point I have to draw a line parallel to the boundary because all laminar flow was happening and here I have backtracked the point which was there before deformation and after deformation this point has gone over there. So if I draw a tiny tangent at the initial position then I can see that this tangent before deformation and the tangent after deformation has been rotated. So that means there is a shear strain. How much is the rotation? Diagrammatically I can find out like I extend this tangent and I extend that tangent and this angle say phi gives a measure of the angular or the rotational strain. If I take tan phi that is another unit of shear strain also. So in this way for this profile I can keep drawing tangents at several points and I can keep on finding out the corresponding phi values and then I can plot those phi values across the shear zone. Across shear zone means this white line. What is the meaning of along shear zone? This line is along the shear zone. So across shear zone AB if I take and I plot A point here and B point there and I plot here the shear strain phi or if I wish I can plot tan phi also what is happening. I can see the shear strain here is 0 and it progressively increases. Say in this case of AB line here is the projection of the vertex. So here is a projection and here is a projection let us say V. So this has got a 0 strain. So the curve basically whatever be the pattern has to go like this. This curve can be worked out. Is it a straight line or curve line? What is the equation? X can be worked out. How to work out? To find out tangent at any point, this is the equation and 
at any point what is the coordinate y comma uz find out equation of tangent it is possible from coordinate geometry to do the tangent line can be worked out now this tangent what is the angle between this tangent and the y axis can be worked out angle between tangent and y axis can be worked out is possible now after this being done after the angle some expression has been found what is further required is that take y equal to y0 in that expression whatever is found put y equal to y0 that means i will get the angle at this point at this point then take y equal to minus y0 i will get the angle between tangent and y axis at that point or at that point then take y is equal to y1 and find out the angle so in this way you can tabulate the angle then you can take y equal to 0.5 y0 y equal to 0.7 y0 a series of points will be obtained angle angular variation so what do we get finally different values of y0 full y0 half of the y0 and a pattern will be found out that pattern will be plotted what will be the plot clearly from the diagram i can understand as i said if this point is a and that point is b this is the projection of the vertex then the shear strain reduces and then it increases this may not be straight line we can work out how the phi varies and we know that as phi increases tan phi also increases or oppositely as phi decreases tan phi also decreases so if this is the pattern now instead of y, phi i put in the y axis tan phi some decrease and then increase pattern will be found so what we find what is that if the point of highest velocity moving in that direction has got zero or minimum shear strain and the point where there may be zero velocity what is that point the neutral point that is the neutral point that has got a shear strain because that point no movement is happening nevertheless the small tangent is taking a turn so there is an angular rotation involved is it it is like this that this line does not go anywhere but this line is tilting so some shear strain is happening so in this diagram basically the pivot or the neutral point n can be somewhere here and you can clearly see that the neutral point also has got some amount of uh, shear strain so as per the diagram that i drew it shows that within the shear zone at some point the shear strain has to be minimum or zero and then again it has to increase but this is not the complete truth there are more theoretical detail that can be worked out imagine there is a parabolic profile produced by a net flow in the upward direction which means del p del z is more than dg sin theta in that case suppose the vertex of the parabolic profile touches the upper boundary what does that mean we know that this coordinate is 0 comma 0 and this coordinate is 0 comma y0 it may be possible due to certain combination of the parameters that the y1 one of the ordinates coordinates of the vertex is equal to y0 if that happens then what is going to happen in that case there is no point within the shear zone where the shear strain is completely zero zero shear will not be found and one problem is that after hearing this lecture if you look at your shear zone and study you may get ambiguous results because whatever i am talking is under certain assumptions for example is your rock behaving like a newtonian viscous fluid that we do not know are you sure that the shear zone boundaries are parallel to each other before comparing with the natural shear zone lot of precautions are to be taken care okay so this is one as i said there can be another possibility 
that there is a net flow upward in that direction and these are the shear senses and the vertex lies outside the shear zone. So, this is possible when y1 actually exceeds y0, y1 is the y coordinate of the vertex. Suppose that exceeds this y0 this y0 magnitude then it goes outside. So, in this case also we will not get 0 shear strain within the shear zone. So, you have to hear the complete lecture then think critically in your shear zone what is the situation and I will be happy if you send me email with your uh, questions on your ductile shear zones and I will be even happy to take part in discussions with you. Uh, you can see and you can also communicate with me. Now, I am back to the topic. So, these are the cases where the shear strain will not be 0 inside and how the cross section can look like. Let us say A B and here I am drawing A B here is A and here is B. So, what will happen? The shear strain is progressively falling from here to there following some curvy planar, curvy linear or maybe a linear fashion, but it will not touch the x axis. So, in both these cases this is going to happen. Same thing with if I do tan phi and B A, then also the curve or the line will not touch this x axis. The deduction that was done here may prove difficult to some of you particularly the geology background student and a simpler way of deduction might be possible to demonstrate. Take an example in this way a horizontal shear zone forget about the del p del z and the dg sin theta etcetera theta equal to 0 degree theta equal to 0 degree. So, this does not exist dg sin theta and consider del p del z is also 0 consider that the top boundary shears with a velocity plus u 1 and the bottom boundary shears with a velocity minus u 2 and say there is a marker layer and I take the x axis I am sorry the, the z the u z in this direction and this is my y axis. And just to match with our previous work. Uh, let us take that the thickness of the shear zone is 2 y 0 unit and therefore, this coordinate is 0 comma minus y 0 and that coordinate is 0 comma plus y 0. So, I repeat the total thickness of the shear zone is 2 y 0 unit just like what was done here. I am trying for a simpler deduction in a simpler case. What is our simpler case? I said that del p del z minus dg sin theta has been 0 and I have taken specifically for example, when theta equal to 0 and the del p del z is also equal to 0. Okay. Now, say this point is A and that point is B. Take a pack of cards, draw a line and give a simple shear straight line alters to a straight line. This can be visually be seen being motivated by that or you take a viscous layer draw a line and keeping the boundaries horizontal if you shear if it is a Newtonian viscous fluid straight line alters to another straight line. So, yeah keeping that in mind a b line will be oriented in this manner and let us say call it a velocity profile as a dash b dash. Now, we can find out the coordinate of a dash what is that? plus u 1 comma because u 1 was the velocity and we are plotting velocity along the x axis and then y 0 and b dash coordinate will be given by minus u 2 comma minus y 0. So, we have got the velocity profile a dash b dash and we know the two coordinates. Now, what is the equation of the velocity profile in that case? the equation of the velocity profile a dash b dash will be given by applying this formula y minus y 1 y x minus x 1 equal to y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1. What is that? Suppose the a dash coordinate is x 1 y 1 the b dash coordinate is x 2 y 2 
Then the equation of A dash B dash is given by this form standard thing from the textbook. So here what will happen? I can write the equation y minus y0 divided by x minus u1, y minus y0 divided by x minus u1 is equal to y0 minus minus y0 equal to 2y0 divided by u1 plus u2. 